is Monday, September 7th, and earlier this week I posted my September TBR where I outlined the ton of books that I want to try to read in the month of September. And so obviously what I've done is went off the TBR immediately. So, so here's what happened. I was really in the mood for literary fiction, and so my friend Udi sent me this because sometimes he just sends me things randomly. Thank you, Udi, but also save you money. The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett is a literary fiction novel about two black women or girls when the book starts, they're girls, um, but they grow up. It follows you through their, their lives. They're both light-skinned and one of them passes as a white woman um, and one of them does not. Like one of them chooses to live their life passing as a white woman and one of them chooses to not do that um, and their lives their lives go on very different trajectories and so this book is about that it's also about the second generation of their family so we get the perspective of um, Desiree's daughter who is actually dark-skinned this is a book that is dealing with race and colorism and just lots of really complex topics it can get pretty dark it is a historical book like it's it's set in, in sort of the past but not too far back in the past it's like the 60s and i really 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 like it it's really good like oh my goodness Britt Banner has a way with words but also just this book is just really engaging to read even when i don't like the characters we follow i'm interested in them and it's really great that there are several characters that i really really like and love the perspectives of i am 200 pages in about that um, I'm on part four, I think. So that's what I've been reading over this weekend. It's the thing I started this weekend. There's also a thing I finished over the weekend, started and finished, and that is for school. I'm in a class about fantasy. This is a story that we read to talk about in class um, tomorrow, Tuesday. And that story is Aladdin and the Enchanted Lamp. It's from A Thousand and One Nights, I think. And I gave this story three stars. I didn't really enjoy it as much as like, other original fairy tales that I've read, mainly because I was just really confused about what I was supposed to get from Aladdin. I think which is what it comes down to is Aladdin is a trickster. He's much more of a trickster than, you know, adaptations would have you believe. Much in like a, in the very like a technical term of trickster. Like he's there to push the bounds of morality. He's not there to be like a good guy. And usually I, I really liked that when I thought it was going to go darker than it did, um, but it didn't. So I was like, okay. And I just, I didn't entirely get what I wanted from this. So I just gave it three stars. I've also read some of the calculating stars. I am 250 pages into this book and it's still really good. I'm really enjoying it a lot more now, I think. Well, I mean, I'm starting to enjoy it more now. I'm hopeful that I could really enjoy it more than I was because we were kind of at a standstill for a while, but I think things are starting to change right now and I'm really enjoying the anxiety rep in this. This is about a woman who is um, kind of thrust into the spotlight after a meteorite hits Earth and she is involved in Earth's efforts to colonize the moon, but women are largely excluded from this effort and so our main character Elma is really fighting for women's rights during this time where a meteorite has hit and women are trying to be excluded from the space program. Elmo really likes the activism she's doing, but also she has pretty bad anxiety. And so she's she's struggling in, at this point in the book to really balance that. And this portrayal of anxiety is really good. It's really relatable. If you're looking for a main character with severe anxiety, this is a great one. Just like go in knowing that she does have really graphic like panic attacks and things. And so like, if that's gonna be triggering, like don't read that but it if you're looking for someone who you might be able to relate to because of similar experiences with anxiety then Elma might be the perfect character for you this is still just a really character driven book the tension is really with the character's growth and it's day-to-day -day life and it's day-to-day -day life in a very different situation from our world but also like it's still day-to-day -day, day -day life and so the plot is not what I want it to be but I'm hoping that that will sort of change by the end. I'm just a really plot-driven reader, and so a character-driven book like this can be pretty hit or miss. This is a really objectively good book. I'm enjoying it. It's just that I'm not enjoying it to the full potential because the plot thing. 
I haven't really read any of Pride and Prejudice. I'm still where I was last time I updated you. I am going to be reading more this week. I'm going to be finishing it like this week, next week. I don't know, soon. But yeah, I don't have any updates because I haven't read anything for it. Um, and then also, um, I am also reading a secret TBR book right now, but I can't tell you about it because it has its own dedicated vlog. And so these are the things I'm working on this week. And I will see you on Wednesday. So it is time for a midweek check-in, even though it's slightly past midweek now because it, because it is Thursday, September 10th. And I usually update you on Wednesdays, but that's okay. We will just do this on Thursday because I was so busy yesterday, I did not get to do this. And this is early Thursday is basically the only time I have to do this right now. So let's first talk about what I've finished. I've actually finished three things, but it's not that impressive. Um, my wrap up's gonna be really like overinflated this month because I'm reading a lot of really short things for class that I normally, I haven't talked about a lot of this stuff in the class, but I kind of want to now. I don't know, not like in detail, but like just a little bit. And the first two things that I have finished this week are Two Lays by Marie de France. Marie de France, if you don't know, is this like woman who lived in like, I don't know, the Middle Ages, I don't know, she spoke like Anglo-Norman, she lived in, she, we, we assume she lived in old Great Britain, like what used to be, what is Great Britain now, but what used to be, you know, different, but we assume she's from France, because that's what she calls herself, Marie de France, and then she also, um, we assume she's a woman, but we really don't know much about her other than that, um, because we don't really know much about the older authors that wrote in English or, you know, English transitional older languages. Yeah, I read two of her lays. I've read some of her lays before in two other classes actually. She's a big um she's a big influence. Like scholars tend to think of her as like an influence into fantasy um because she was she her lays were like these these narrative poems that were about Arthurian times. They were Arthurian romances. They take place with the knights and they often take have have a sort of magical element to them and so I'm reading them for my fantasy class because she's very influential on fantasy as Arthurian legend is very influential on fantasy. And so I read Lanval, Lanval, I don't know, and Yonick, Yonick, I don't know how to say these names. I haven't had a class about them yet. But yeah, so they're just two little short lays, um, both sort of Arthurian. Lanval was just like a pretty typical Arthurian sort of thing. Like there's like a court and like an otherworldly being like kind of and conditions about having, you know, like some sort of interaction with that otherworldly being. Same old, same old. And then um, Yonick was actually very similar to be sleeping. No, Rapunzel. It was very similar to Rapunzel. So that was interesting. But I honestly didn't care about either of these. They were like three stars. I've read things that I like better by Marie de France. If you're looking to read some Marie de France, I recommend Sir Orfeo. Anyways, the really substantial thing I finished this week so far was The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. Britt Bennett. So I loved this book. I thought it was amazing. I'm still sitting on a rating like a five star or 4.5. I can't really tell which one it is. I really loved it, but I don't really know fully how to rate literary fiction. I know I like it better than a four star. It's just I can't tell whether I like it whether I like it enough to consider it like a five star because like Bachman is like my five star literary fiction and I don't think I liked it as much as Bachman but it was close and I really liked what it was doing like uniquely to itself you know like I wasn't comparing it the whole time to Bachman or anything like that I'm not trying to say that it's they're very different books and they're very different writers and that's and literary fiction is often like they all have different traits that are very different from each other even though they are you know supposedly in the same category or genre but yeah so this isn't like a lot of the other literary fiction i've read it does its own things but you know just in terms of enjoyment i try to rate books based off my enjoyment of other books like them and it's somewhere in between where the crawdads sing and um frederick bachman's bear town and i can't figure out which one it is i loved this book i thought it was great it's not the kind of book that i would have expected myself to like because it doesn't have a super large like your super prominent driving plot like we have definitely a premise and somewhat of a plot like it's more about this family and the relations and the, across generations and how whiteness and colorism and racism and and culture I guess and like what you are raised as versus what you can pass as I guess how all that comes into it and how how um 
colorism drives different like different people do different things I guess so it does have you know a sort of a plot but it's not a lot it's not super dramatic you know like that's what I'm saying it's not super dramatic and usually I really like my literary fiction to have a little bit of drama to it like I would I would prefer to not just like sit with some people's pretty pretty ordinary lives I would rather there be a little bit more drama such as in like the way Bachman writes his can be sometimes sort of thrillery and the way that um, Delia Owens wrote where the crowd had saying there's like a murder mystery happening. And so I usually prefer something like that. This is not that. This is like very much a slow character focused day to day life sort of story. But the way it was written was so thrilling and I loved it. And it proved to me that I can like this type of story. And this is just, just genuinely such a good book that I, I mean, I can't recommend it highly enough. The way that Britt Bennett weaves together this story, the thread of plot that runs through everything is masterful. It just is. Like she is a master at giving you just enough from one perspective and then giving you a, the, the next perspective will change how you read that entire perspective or how you read that entire scene. She is so good at withholding information from you and then giving it back in order to change your perspective, in order to keep you on your toes. And the, that, that, re those reveals that kept coming and, and the way that things would be repositioned in your mind just made this so thrilling and so interesting to read. This is just so good. If you like literary fiction, I highly recommend it. I thought it was very accessible and very interesting for someone who likes a lot of literary fiction but has also found some that didn't work as well at all for me, um, I think that, you know, you can give it a try and you can see if it works for you because it very well might. Okay, now that I've talked so much about that, let me quickly update you on what I'm still reading. I am still reading the secret book that I'm, that, that vlog of me reading it will hopefully be up next week at some point, but I'm still reading it. And then we also have um, Pride and Prejudice, which I'm still reading. I am currently 213 pages into it. I just have that little bit left and a lot of its notes. And so I'm really getting close to the end with this one. It I'm going to be done with it by next Tuesday because like that's when our class needs to be done with it. I'm still loving this reread. We are getting into the like really dramatic and fun parts of this and some of the best parts in my opinion. And I love it and I have loved my experience of rereading this and experiencing this story. The Calculating Stars. I am 321 pages into it. I haven't been able to read this one. I've, I've, I've read a lot. I've made some good progress in it but I haven't been able to finish it like I wanted to before now but hopefully today after today my schedule will clear up a little bit and I'll be able to finish this. Um, I'm kind of listening it on, to it on audiobook mostly so I haven't had that much time to do that. But, you know, this is really good still. It's still, I'm, I'm enjoying it more. I've said in the past that this was sort of boring me and that was true then and it still can be sort of true. It's still very character driven in a very day-to-day -day life way, but it's not, you know, gripping me as much as like something like The Vanishing Half was, where that was also a day-to-day. -day. Completely different genres though. This is sci-fi, if you couldn't tell, or if you didn't know, I didn't tell you. And then that one's like literary fiction, very realistic. I'm at the point now with this one where I'm actually interested in the, the plot and the trajectory of it. And so, you know, that'll be interesting to see um, go down. I'm interested. I don't know where this is going. Like, I have an idea of where it's going, but I also don't know how she's going to end it. It feels like we haven't done a whole lot, um, but I guess we have, you know, like I have some predictions and I have some things where it's like, this is going to blow up in your face. I can already predict that, but I'm also not sure, you know, I've never experienced a Mary Robinette Koal book before. I don't know how this is going to go. I've heard from my friend Udi, who's, this is his favorite book, um, the ending some people find overwhelming. I mean, underwhelming. I'm hoping that that's not me and I hope that I will enjoy the ending, but I don't know. We'll see. It's a good book. I'm enjoying it. I'm, you know, not overly enjoying it, but it's not like a, it's definitely a good book, you know? So this is some of what I've been reading and I will update you tomorrow, I guess, Friday. I'm hoping to start two new books soon when I can, you know, wrap up that audiobook that I'm listening to. I want to start a new one because I just got Ray Bear um, from my library and I'm hoping to start Three Dark Crowns soon after I finished The Vanishing Half. So we will see. I've got some stuff coming. 
um, and I will see you Friday. Okay, so now you want to be bright after I just filmed the whole video when it was dark. Anyways, let's update on this reading vlog. So it is actually Saturday, September 12th. I don't know. I'm going to have this go up on a Sunday for the first time, I think, for a reading vlog. Um, just because it was easier. I wanted to be able to give you some actual content about the books I was reading. And I wasn't reading very much and I just didn't get to talk to you about it. So I have some things to update you on now. So that's good. First thing is I have nothing to update you on on Pride and Prejudice or the secret TBR book because obviously secret it's not to be talked about in this vlog. However, I did finish The Calculating Stars. This whole book got read by me um, and it's still, you know, it's, it's still a four star book. It's not my favorite sci-fi I've ever read um, just because it's very character driven. Um, it's very much all of the tension is wrapped around Elma and her anxiety and while I really appreciate that as someone who struggles with anxiety myself um, it was a good rep but it you know it just isn't enough for me to really um, like love this book like I want something a little bit different out of my sci-fi if I'm gonna be reading sci-fi like I want more plot heavy books but overall it's a solid book like there's nothing objectively wrong with it literally like if you are a more character driven reader than me you should read this book all day this is this is probably your favorite book it's my friend Udi's favorite book it's not my favorite book and it's because it just didn't do exactly what I wanted with plot and with you know everything like that and so that's where I am with this one um I finished it and to that was, I was listening to that on audio and so to replace that I picked up another audiobook and that is Ray Bearer by Jordan Fuego so I'm liking this this is a YA fantasy I'm like 20% of the way through it right now um this is a YA fantasy that is West African inspired the world is West African inspired and we follow how do you pitch this book that's the thing it's a little bit hard for me to pitch this book I guess the pitch would be so this human woman makes a union come about um with a supernatural creature demon thing um, and their offspring is who we follow for the book. We follow this child who is born for a very specific purpose, and that specific purpose is to, for some reason, kill the prince of the empire, I guess. The future rule of the empire, I guess, is gotta go. So our main character is basically tasked, as she gets older, with killing the prince, and so in order to do that, she is sent to become very close to the prince, be one of the Council of Eleven that advises the prince in all things and loves the prince better than anyone in the world and cannot betray the prince. And so of course her task is to betray the prince. Um, and so we follow her as she is like getting close to the prince and trying to, she's sent to fulfill the task, but you know, she's got her own mind and she's still, it's a YA book, so she's still also trying to figure out like what she wants and everything. And so there's that element of it. Um, it's really good. This world is very interesting, unconventional, unconventional, what am I trying to say? Unconventional for a fantasy world. And like, that is honestly what seems to me entirely due to breaking free from that Western influence. Jordan E. Fuego really breaks a lot of the things that the Western white supremacist patriarchy is really imposed um, on our views of how things should be. And so like the social system, everything is just very different in this world. And so it's, it's really interesting. And then the magic is also really interesting. I don't fully understand the magic yet because there's like a lot to it. There's like, it seems like there's already like several different magic systems going on, but most of it comes down to, um, or at least one of the main, the magic systems is you can have an inborn gift called a hollow and our main character's hollow is actually reading the history of an object or a person. And so there's several different magic things going on. Um, and so that's really interesting. There's a lot of intrigue there and it's just, I mean, it's not a whimsical story, but some of the magic, the, like feels very like mythic almost but the other magic is really interesting I'm loving it um Ray Bear is really good so far I'm not very far into it but I would like to keep reading it's good um and then I wanted to pick up a, another physical book and so I tried to read Three Dark Crowns I stopped this after one chapter for personal reasons which I don't really want to get into on YouTube but I 
couldn't do it. Not for me. I'm gonna get rid of it. And so that freed me up to pick up another book. And the book I tried to pick up so far is Scythe. I'm only like a tiny little bit of the way into it. But I picked up Scythe and it's it's I mean the first chapter was interesting it was good I'm not properly into it yet um I haven't really wanted to read and so that's part of the problem but you know what do you do yeah so that was my week in reading I hope that you enjoyed this okay so that was my week in reading and um I will see you next week let me know if you like this day better for the vlog and if you like seeing a more full version of my week and I will see you next time bye